Hello guys, it's Strabo here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing another video about economics. I'm going to be reacting to a Wall Street Journal article. I've already read it, but I'm just reading it again just to, you know, uh, make some comments about it because I found it pretty funny. I don't usually read articles that often because like, I already know what the whole gist is going to be. I just saw it when I was on the uh, stocks app on, that you get with like your iPhone. The uh, title kind of catched me. It says the, it was called the economic recovery is here and it's unlike anything you've seen, which I found hilarious because they're not re really recovering from anything. Oh, actually, no, they're not recovering at all. They haven't recovered since the year 2000. So the U.S. economic recovery is unlike anything you've seen in history. Powered by consumers with trillions in <laughs> powered by consumers with trillions in savings, business eager to hire an enormous <laughs> policy support. Uh, businesses and workers are poised to emerge from the downturn with far less permanent damage that occurred after the recent recessions, particularly in the 2007-2009 downturn. So first of all, consumers don't have any savings. The money they have is just money that was printed from the government. Okay? The savings rate before the recession was just absolutely abysmal. So no savings right there. Business is eager to hire. That's also BS. Uh, the worst thing you can do is hire someone because of all the regulation, how risky it is to hire someone. If the government doesn't like the way you hire someone, you can get penalized for that. If they don't like the way that you fire someone, you can get penalized for that. So it's super, super risky to hire someone. And um, enormous policy support. Nothing uh, supportive about the policies that are going on right now. This said that this downturn was far less uh, damaging than the one from 2007, 2009. Once again, completely disagree with that because they never recovered from 2008 and, like uh, recession. So things got worse and then the market dipped again and then things got even worse. Then, you know, they're just postponing the pain because politicians want to get reelected. So new businesses are popping up at a fast paced record. Um, I don't really have the statistics on that. So I mean, it could be true, but I think that's complete uh, crap. The rate at which workers uh, quit their jobs, a proxy for confidence in the labor market, uh, matches the highest going back to 2000. <laughs> I mean, I find, that, I find that funny. The labor force participation rate is lower now than what it was in 2008. Back then it was like 66%, right, uh, right now it's like 61.9%. American household debt service burdens uh, as a share of after-tax income are near the lowest level since 1980 when records began. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up nearly 18% from pre-pandemic levels in early February 2020. Home, uh, home prices nationwide are 14% higher at the same time. I don't see how home prices are being higher. Anything good about that because that means it's more expensive to buy a home. They're rising nominally, which means not adjusting for inflation, but uh, they're they're falling big time in terms of uh, the price of gold. Same thing with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, the Dow Jones has been in a bear market in terms of gold since the year 2000. The Dow to gold ratio. I haven't checked in a while. Um, I think it's right now at, like 20 ounces of gold or 19 ounces. Uh, the highest it was uh, back in 2000 when it was uh, 40 ounces of gold. And even then, like that number was BS because everyone was just dumping their gold and dumping their money to the market because of uh you know, the tech bubble. Uh, the highs before that was um, back before uh, uh, Nickerson took America off the gold standard. And um, back then, I think the Dow to gold ratio was about 22 ounces. To explain what the Dow to gold ratio is, uh, the Dow uh, Jones Industrial Average is a price index stock. So all the 30 companies together, uh, it's like, you know, based off its uh, price. Like if you were to buy all 30 companies, you divide that by the price of gold and that's how many ounces of gold you need in order to buy the, the, the Dow Jones. It's an index though. So you can't like buy like 30,000. You have to buy those stocks individually. That's what it means. The speed of rebound is uh, also triggering turmoil. The shortage of goods raw materials and labor that typically emerge toward the end of expansion are cropping up much sooner. Many economists, along with the Federal Reserve, expect the jump in inflationary to be, inflation sorry, to be temporary, but others worry it could persist even once reopening uh, reopening is complete. That last sentence, but others worry it could persist even once reopening is complete. I would be one of those, but like way extreme, like like hyperinflation, I see like a 95% chance of that happening. Like this inflation right now is not temporary. It makes no sense, right? Let's say, like, uh, I always use lettuce as an example. So if lettuce is $3 and then it goes from $3 to $3.25, it's never coming back down. So you're temporarily getting nothing really. It's a permanent pr uh, price increase in terms of lettuce and then it's gonna keep going up and up. This whole inflation thing being temporary is the same thing as a subprime being contained back in uh, two, uh, 2007 when the subprime bubble popped and then uh, the whole market just went. Um, back uh, like later on in 2008. We never seen anything like it, a collapse and then a boom pickup, uh, said Alan Sinai. I'm not sure who that is. Chief global strategist at uh, Decision Economics is without historical parallel. Yeah, because nobody had predicted that the money supply was gonna increase by 25% from the Federal Reserve and just get it injected into the market. That's the only reason why the market rebounded. It's not really recovering from anything. The problems have just gotten a billion times worse. How can the market be worth more now than when it was from before? Uh, before the pandemic, there were 22 trillion in debt, now they're 28 trillion. It makes no sense how it could be worth more. COVID-19 pandemic restrictions sent the U.S. economy into a free fall last spring. Economists and policymakers worried it would take years for workers and businesses to heal and now expect the economy sides to surpass pre-pandemic levels 
uh, analysts by, uh, project that by the end of the year, GDP will uh, reach the path it was projected to follow had the pandemic never happened and then exceeded at least temporarily. Uh, the GDP number is a bunch of BS. It's basically a, uh, a number based off consumption. Consumer spending takes up 70% of GDP and there's nothing like productive about some uh, somebody spending their money. Like I said in the last video, it's all about savings and production. So the GDP number is a bunch of BS. The recoveries from the 1990, 91, 2001, 2008 recessions were jobless. Weak demand reduced employers' need for labor, keeping unemployment severely high for years. This time, however, the labor market appears increasingly tight. The unemployment cost index is the first quarter rose 0.9% uh, from the previous quarter. The sharpest increase since 2007. That's even when the unemployment rate right now being at 6.1% remains far higher than before the pandemic. Uh, like I said, the unemployment rate right now is a bunch of BS. It doesn't count people who basically threw in the towel and like just gave up finding a job and it also doesn't count people who are working part-time temporarily but can't find a full-time job and like i said before with the labor force participation rate if that comes down unemployment is also going to come down so a bunch of crap right there the turn in fortunes has been head spinning for a lot of businesses at the atlanta farm to uh, table restaurant Billy union executive chief owner blah 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 can't uh can't <laughs> Can't hire fast enough to keep up with sudden uh, onslaught of business after um, months of struggles to, due to pandemic triggered shutdowns. Maybe this guy's hiring a bunch of people. Uh, that's good for him. But other business owners, like I said, is like super risky to hire someone. Maybe uh, his his restaurant specifically has a lot of demand because people have a surplus of money that's being printed from the government. They don't get it from actually being productive and trying to work. Um, they're just sitting at home and doing nothing. So that maybe uh, because of that increase in demand, he probably needs to hire some employees. Just because a, a, a restaurant owner is doing uh, well doesn't mean the whole economy is doing good. But uh, if he's doing good, good for him. All right, let's read this. Economists point to four key ways the current recovery differs from its prede predecessors. So national versus financial dis uh, disaster. Past recessions typically resulted from a rise in interest rates or decline in asset values uh, that hurt output, income, and employment, sometimes for more than a year, said Gail Fossler, an economist and president of the Gail Fossler Group, blah, blah, blah. The damage to household finances and financial, financial institutions after 2007 cra uh, housing crash led to lost demand that waited um, on the economy for years. So... This whole thing about demand, I, I talked about it in my last video, okay, de demand is unlimited. People want stuff, like, all the time, so I don't know, like, why people care so much about demand. I mean, if you want to, like, demand for, like, a specific product, like, lettuce, I mean, sure, you can measure that, but there's always going to be demand. When does somebody not want something? And it says that it typically rises from, um... It results from higher interest rates. Well, that's the point because the interest rates were kept too low for too long. After the tech bubble uh, burst that was uh, artificial high created by the government, Alan Greenspan, the idiot, he brought interest rates down to 1% and kept them there for too long. And then when the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates, they did it super, super slowly. And that made a bunch of people rush into getting a house. I mean, I don't really want to explain the real estate bubble right now. So um, it's going to be hard to explain really because I don't want to get into it. But basically a bunch of people rushing to get houses and then it took too long to raise interest rates. And then when they finally raised them, uh, I, I think when past five percent is what you know caused the bubble to pop subprime and then leading to the rest of the mortgage market natural disasters temporarily interrupt economic activity while leaving intact the underlying demand and supply of goods and services once the disaster passes the economic recover uh, recover the economy sorry recovers faster with typical recession a, tw a 2019 study of individual tax returns of new orleans residents found that after a large initial blow from hurricane katrina victims bounced back within a few years even suppressed those of unaffected earners I mean, what do you expect? A hurricane comes, destroys everything, and then people get their money back going back to work. I don't see any um, economic growth in that. It's the broken window theory. People think it's a good thing for the economy if a, like a hurricane happens. Like not like, you know, hurricanes are good and like people's homes should be destroyed, but then people get to go work and fix something. You're fixing something that you already had. So there's no growth in that. You're just back at square one. Uh, the widespread vaccination is continuing. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, vaccine. At Miller Union, the Atlanta restaurant sales fell 90% last spring from pre-pandemic levels. No, duh, bro, because no one was going to a restaurant because of the lockdown. Like, thanks. So now we're going to <laughs> monetary and physical policy. All right, let's go. The coronavirus brought a, uh, about a faster and bigger monetary and physical response than in any previous recession. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. Uh, limiting damage to the economic system and setting the stage for a faster recovery. Uh, actually, no, they made, thing, they made things a billion times worse. And once again, no, there's no recovery happening. It's just a bunch of nominal growth. The Federal Reserve cut rates uh, initiated large-scale bond purchases and outlined a new commitment to keep interest rates uh, near zero until full employment has returned and inflation was headed above its 2% target. 
<laughs> oh my god. Officials say that rates may not rise until 2024. I mean, they're never going to raise rates, um, especially now. No chance of that happening. They tried to raise rates back in 2018. They went up to 2.5%, and that's where the, the, the market tanked, and then they went back down to zero. So they're never, ever going to raise interest rates. Uh, the Fed's balance sheet surged from uh, 4.2 trillion up to 7.1 trillion. There's nothing good about that. The increase was um, was less than 1.3 trillion during the uh, previous recessions. I don't see how the Fed's balance sheet going up is a good thing when the whole decade they've been um, basically bluffing about uh, shrinking their balance sheet. Congress acted faster than in previous downturns. They shouldn't have. They should have let the uh, market restructure. Uh, it's short of business and household balance sheets uh, through multiple rounds of stimulus payments. Not a good thing as well. Budget printed money, expanded unemployment benefits, and paid paycheck protection program. I mean, I don't like unemployment benefits either because it just incentivizes people to not work. People are going to stay unemployed until their unemployment uh, benefits expire. It's like a mini vacation for them. Congress physical response to the COVID-19 pandemic will amount to 5.1 trillion or 4.4% of uh, GDP through 2024, according to the Committee of, of uh, for Responsible Federal Budget uh, by comparison stimulus legislation enacted in the wake of the 2007-2009 recession cost roughly 1.8 uh, 1, 1 trillion or 2.4% uh, of uh, GDP. So uh, Congress spending more money is not a good thing because they have to get that money from something, the, uh, from sorry, from businesses. Government can't create wealth. They just steal it from someone else and then just dump it somewhere else. So it's basically like burning your money, really. The upshot is that household incomes are up uh, substantially from pre-pandemic levels, especially for unemployment beneficiaries now receive $300 of regular benefits compared with $25 in the 2007-2009 recession. A University of Chicago study found 40 42% of beneficiaries receive more income than at the previous job. But once again, people are, in are incentivized to not work because they get paid more money not working than working. That's why nobody wants to go back to work. That's why people are dropping out of the labor force and that's why the labor force participation rate is going down. I'd rather be uh, collecting unemployment checks than uh, working. I mean, it's a way better deal. It's not that people are lazy. It's literally like, yo, like I just said, you're getting more money to not work. So people are obviously going to take that offer. The size of aid programs has its critics. Many Republican lawmakers oppose Biden's uh, March 1.9 trillion stimulus package. I mean, once again, they shouldn't have passed that stimulus package, but they had no problem when uh, Trump was doing it. I mean, both both sides are crap. All right. They're both socialist parties. All right. Uh, the U.S. government ran a $1.9 trillion deficit uh, from October through uh, April, a record from a seven month period, which is not a good thing. People are just getting destroyed with the inflation tax. And to tell you what the inflation tax is, right, they have a budget deficit that $1.9 trillion, they got to get it from somewhere. So what the Federal Reserve does is print money. Sorry, they print money and they just give it to, uh, you know, the, go the government to spend. That $1.9 trillion is all printed. The money supply expands and therefore prices go up. So if the price of lettuce is uh, $3 and it goes up to three ten, that's that tax right there, that 10 cents. And it pretty much happens with pretty much all products. Republicans and some economists also argue $300 of unemployment uh, top off is deterring workers from taking new jobs. Yep. I mean, they're right about that, but they had no problem when it was going on from before. Uh, a growing number of Republican led state plans to cut extra benefits before they expire in September. I heard uh, Ron DeSantis was doing that. He said, now if you're receiving unemployment benefits, benefits you gotta show proof five times a week that you're uh, trying to apply for a job which is world class uh, Biden has defended the expanded jobs benefits uh, saying other factors are deterring work uh, searches such as lack of full-time child care and fear of pandemic okay um, it's just a bunch of crap here at the bottom now I did skip some things in the article because there's really no point in reading it they're talking about like vaccine rates or whatever that's gonna be the end of today's video uh, a very very funny article from uh, the Wall Street Journal I mean it just goes to show how clueless people are of the economy um, this is obviously a bunch of Keynesian economics uh if they were Austrian economics they would be criticizing the hell out of this I am right now I wouldn't call myself an economist because I haven't even graduated from university I'm definitely part of like the Austrian school of thought uh rather than you know Keynesian, Keynesian economics obviously so uh that's the end of the video guys leave a like if you want some more economic stuff um even if you don't leave a like I'm probably gonna do it anyway and uh, I'll see you guys later